people are core students saying that. Yeah. The course uh, is Lisa, talking to your mind. Th that, that's the reason, Lisa, I'm asking everyone to become a teacher of A Course in Miracles, rather than saying, I'm listening to all these different voices. The ego loves to listen to voices. Oh, this guy says this and that guy, and I read this book and I read this. No. Exactly. The, no, you don't want to go in that direction of something outside of me is teaching me. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. God gave you the Holy yeah. Spirit as your teacher. And so, he teaches me all the time. Right. So what <laughs> yeah. you want to do, yeah, the Holy Spirit is there when you're willing, key word is willing to take your place among the teachers. The Holy Spirit will speak to you and through you, and you never have to say, I hear all these voices anymore. Thank you. And you just okay. Thank you. have to keep in mind, pardon the pun, the Course is always talking to the mind. And there is no, no, there's no gap between the mind and the body. In fact, we were reading this morning, of course, again, about the body only responds to mind. It's, it's a neutral vehicle. It doesn't even think. It only responds to mind. So the more that you turn your mind over to the Holy Spirit, of course, the more the body is going to respond to the right mind. It's never talking to the person that's reading the book. Because you'll never and get anywhere if you think it's talking to you as an individual. No, exactly. And that's how I've come to really treat forgiveness now is that when I'm looking, when I'm looking at somebody and thinking their body did something to offend me or attack me, it's not them at all. That's just the trigger. It's just a trigger. Of my own projection. So once I learned that, then it's not about that person at all. Would you react to figures in a dream? Yeah. If you knew you were dreaming. I like to, everybody, uh, should, everybody should read the dreamer of the dream and the hero of the dream at least once a week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, yeah. Can I just uh, say, Dove, and I'm, I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Minute, I just want to say, Lisa, I, I hear where you're coming from. And I know, like, you're probably experiencing a little bit of confusion as you're going through A Course in Miracles because, uh, you know, again, it's like Lloyd was just saying, it's like if you're reading it from the perspective of the personal I. And we all do. Yeah, we all do it. We all do that when we yeah. start the course. Yeah. We sit there and think, well, this is talking to me, this guy sitting on the couch. Right. But after a number of years, and, you know, it seems like it's very difficult. Something happens and you say, well, holy shit, this is not talking to me. Exactly. To the mind. Because on every page, it, it talks about the mind, the mind. The yeah. Mind. But we don't get it because we're not ready to get it. Right. But, then, but know, I'm just it, starting to get it. And that's like affecting how I do forgiveness now completely right. differently. Right. And it will also affect how you understand the course. And it makes a yeah. huge yeah. difference. And it's like when I'm in my right mind, when I'm with Jesus, I don't have these confusing thoughts. It's when I'm trying to figure it out. Right. And the course is not the Lisa identity, you know. And it's not oh. actually designed to be figured out because we even have to relinquish the way that we learn, right? Le the course even says learning is a skill you taught yourself. I always say Jesus. Right? says what he says and means what he says. Yeah. I'd like to insert this at this moment, if I may. Uh, first of all, that whole idea of me, if, you, if you're a follower of the, of the Indian mystics like Ramana Maharshi, who, who deals in, in oneness, Advaita Vedanta, and that's basically, A Course in Miracles is about non-duality. It's not, not duality, but non-duality. So he's famous for saying, ask the question, who am I? What am I? His interpreter has come back and said, you know, the Western people think the question, who am I? They don't understand it. He's really saying, ask, what is this me? What is this me that is thinking these things? Ask, what is this me? Yeah. That's, that is what he's asking. Now, I like to insert... One, one other thing, learning concepts is not healing. Right. To me, what's healing 
is looking at the things in your own life. There's no accident that you're going through trials and tribulations in your own life, things that seem to hurt you, that bother you, that trigger you. That is what heals you by looking at the things in your life. Yeah, you can use some concepts to, to make things easy. Like if, if a person comes to me and say, you know, I work in an office and this person is so rude to me. I can't stand it. She, sa she always says things that make me feel small. Now, what is, what is Dove thinking at that moment? Well, Dove looks at the first thing I said today. There's nothing outside of you. This is what you must ultimately learn. So if I use that, there's nothing, on, then what am I talking about? Somebody in the office says things to me that I don't like, they're very rude and crude. Uh, how do I stop it? Well, wait a minute. It's easy when you realize there's nothing outside of you doing anything to you. You're not at the effect of this person. You're the cause of what's going on in your mind. That's what counseling is about. So I did put up my, my number and I say the first session, if you want to call, is always about 45 minutes long. It's free and we just talk about what's going on in your life because that's the real healing, not the concepts in the course. The concepts in the course are, are nice things to, to kind of remember. But what's going on in your life is what has to be healed, not the concepts. Like, like for me, lesson five, which happens to be Ken Wapnick's favorite lesson, nothing I see, uh, no, no, excuse me, lesson five, I'm never upset for the reason I think. I'm never upset for the reason. So if I'm using that, then obviously the person in the office is not upsetting me. The person in the office is saying rude things is not upsetting me. If nothing, if I'm never upset for the reason I think, people come to me and say, I think I'm upset because this person is, is, is saying rude, true things to me. Right. No, I'm not upset because someone is saying rude, true. I'm upset because I'm listening to a voice that's not my real teacher right. telling me that I should be angry. I should be upset. I should get back at them. I should get even. I should, I should kick them out of my life. No, that just keeps the lesson going. You haven't learned the lesson. Right. So the lessons that you come here for are the lessons that you're going through in your life and where there's no peace. Those are the lessons you come to for a counseling session. Those are the things that you're really here for. And I hope that's helpful to everybody. Thank you. Right. Yeah, it's becoming so that when I have those things come up, it's like, oh, another opportunity for healing. It's like a signpost for me for yeah. correction. So yeah, thank you. And don't forget the course says, you know, we are reviewing mentally. Yeah, that which has gone by. It's a very important statement. Okay, because it's see Melissa, this Melissa, over long ago. I, Melissa says she's in Ireland. And she's asking me a question. Am I on zoom? Well, this is zoom. And the only Zooms I'm ever on is other people's Zoom. I have Zoom, but I never, I never use my own Zoom. <laughs> I don't. I really don't. I'm, I'm on Tuesday night on a Zoom session. It's called Finding Your Inner Teacher. It starts at 7 o'clock Eastern time. I guess over in Ireland, it's, it's at midnight. And on, two, on Thursday night, uh, we're on another Zoom session run by HCIM Gather, which is a room I started many years ago on the internet. And we're doing a deep dive into the manual for teachers and everyone's invited. Uh, on Monday night, which is tonight, there's a woman named Amy Anderson. If you have ever heard of Amy Anderson, she teaches the freedom of forgiveness. But her idea of forgiveness, I got to I got to say, floored me when I first heard it. Most of you know what Ho'oponopono is. Most of you, most, most of you know Ho'oponopono and the doctor in Hawaii that came up with it and things like that. Yeah. But she uses Ho'oponopono not between her and another person, which I know works. She uses it between her and God. And that's what she does on Monday nights from seven to eight. And if you want, uh, that's the ACIM gather Zoom thing. I don't have the link, but uh, you know, I, I could, all you do is contact me at my email, I'll get you the link. 
And that starts at seven. Now, the way she does this with, with God rather than with another person is she realizes the same as we all realize that I am mistaken. I have a mistaken belief. So she starts off with saying, God, please forgive me. I was mistaken. And then she says, Father, thank you. I love you. And every week we work on a different thought that bothers us. And she uses the, the many emotions that come up in nonviolent communication. Some of you are familiar with nonviolent communication. Maybe you're not. Okay. So there are many emotions, emotions of anger, of feeling depressed. And you work with the emotions of things that bother you during the day. And you work on one emotion and then you, and then you do this ho'oponopono for about 20 minutes with God and, and the very healing sessions. So I do that on a Zoom session on Monday. On Tuesday, I have my own session called Finding Your Inner Teacher. And Thursday night, I do uh, the thing that ACIM Gather does with a lot of people called uh, Deep Dive into the Song of Prayer. We, we just finished Deep Dive into the Manual for Teachers, by the way. Th that took about seven months. We went through all the questions, including the clarification terms. And it's very interesting. We just started the song of prayer. Very interesting. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. I guess again, we guys. all know that uh, that statement in the, the course where it says trials are but lessons presented once again, where you made a faulty decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very good thing to keep in mind because it's, that's what happens. We keep getting the same lessons over and over until we get them. And it doesn't necessarily mean in this lifetime. They can be presented once again in what we would call a past or a future lifetime. Yeah. That's what we're reviewing. When it says yeah. we're reviewing mentally, we can switch lifetimes. Yeah, that, that's exactly chapter, the last chapter, the last section, chapter 31, section A is choose once again. And there's a very famous paragraph. I'm going to read it. These things that we call lessons, he calls trials are but lessons that you failed to learn before, presented once again. So where you made a faulty choice before, you now can make a better choice now. So that's exactly what we're, what, what we're here for. We, we are really reviewing what we did in the past and we're trying to choose it to see it differently. Above all else, I'm determined to see these things differently. Nothing is happening to me. Everything is happening for me. Exactly. For me. The ego says, no, these things are happening to me. I got to avoid this. I, I, I got to run away. I mean, Freud said, fight or flight. I, I have to either fight back or I have to run away. You know, as, as Ken Wapnick's one of his favorite metaphors is, he says, your problem is not that you're sitting in a sandbox and people are kicking sand in your face and you have to decide whether you want to fight back and kick sand in their face or you want to run away. That's not your problem. Your problem is that you think that there's a sandbox that you're sitting in and there's no sandbox. <laughs> That's the thing about there is no world. Yeah. You think that there's a sandbox yeah. and, and, and you have to decide whether to fight or, or run away. That's not your problem. Your problem is you think that this thing is real. I used to say the truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. 